Hey there everyone, Chris Mack here. And today, um, if you notice that I'm wearing the same clothes as my last video, it's because I'm going ahead and I did all my wife's gear and now I'm doing all of my gear. So this video is about what I keep in my truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with what I keep actually inside the truck and then I'll go with what's in the toolbox in the back. So first and foremost for inside the truck, because you never know, I like to keep a little computer in case a uh, light comes on, I can check to see what it is. Next thing is a neon safety vest. And the reason I have this is because after working in search and rescue and EMS for a decade, that I actually have lost the number of times that rubberneckers have hit me, not paying attention. And uh, yeah, there you go. Next thing I have is, because of living in Wyoming, and you can see really far out here because it's all nice and flat, I do keep a pair of binoculars in case I do see something up ahead in the road or if uh, you see smoke, especially with wildfires and stuff like that, something to be able to get a really long distance and see what the heck's going on. The next thing I have is some cold weather gear. So this is a compact Amazon coat. It's one of the fluffy ones. It's good for insulation. It's not so great for wind, but definitely some really good insulation there. The next thing I have is also some additional cold weather gear. In this thing, I have a little bit of catch all of everything. I have some extra beef jerky in there. I have a book with maps. I've got gloves. I've got scarf. Um, I've got a cook kit in there. The Esbit stove that I did a video on, that is in here. And yeah, that's about it for what is in here. The next thing I have is medical. This specifically hangs behind my seat to where this is able to hang out and be seen. So I've got a CPR mask here. I've got a cat tourniquet here on the side. I've got stuff like gauze, a basic first aid kit, combat gauze, all different kinds of stuff like that because basic first aid kits that you'll find anywhere they are usually 75 80 90 percent depending on how crappy they are band-aids so i don't recommend getting regular run-of-the-mill first aid kits i feel like you can raid your medicine cabinet and then actually put some good stuff in there like combat gauze israeli bandages um, tourniquets things like that so i believe in building out your own first aid kit the next thing that i do keep in the truck under a seat is uh, this little survival kit. This is about as close as I'm going to get to a get home bag or a bug out bag or anything, whatever acronym you wanna call it. Um, this really isn't even that either. It has a few survival essentials. There's a multi-tool in here. There's a compass in here, a uh, cravat, some basic first aid stuff. There's actually a mini Nalgene bottle in here with water that I change out every so often, a granola bar, and that's about it. I actually do not believe in bug out bags or get home bags at all. And you're probably thinking, wait, you did 10 years of search and rescue and EMS and you don't believe in bug out bags? That is absolutely correct. And if I get three people down below in the comments saying, why don't you have a bug out bag? I will do a separate video on that because it's a long one. Uh, so this is about as close as one of those get. Now let's move on to the stuff I keep in the toolbox. Okay, the next thing I wanna go over are hand tools. But before that, uh, also, Every door of this truck has minimum of two, if not four bottles of water in it. All right, um, next are hand tools, starting with a four-way, an old one. Again, if you are gonna outfit your truck and stuff like that, get the tools that you need, but it doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money on them. Uh, garage sale, I think this was a buck. <laughs> Granted, I've had it for 20 years, but garage sale for a dollar. Next thing I have is a good old fashioned handsaw because while it would be nice to have a chainsaw in the back of my truck all the time, it's not practical to have all the time. Plus I live in Wyoming. There's not a whole heck of a lot of trees out here. So on the odd chance I might need it, okay. So a little handsaw does just fine for me. Again, same thing whenever it comes to other tools like that. I keep an ax just in case. I've actually um, used the mallet on this more, and I haven't used it a whole lot, but I've used the mallet more than I've used for chopping, but good to have on hand just in case. Uh, next thing I have is a Fisker's little machete thing. Actually, I feel like this is something that would come in more handy where I live just because, again, Wyoming and lots of brush and stuff like that of getting around uh, fence posts and things like that if I need to see what's going on down there. So I feel like this is going to actually come in handy more so than the axe or the saw. 
Another thing I kind of want to uh, state here too is prepare for your surroundings and what you need. If you live in a heavily forested area where you feel like you need a more hefty saw, then do that. If you live in the plains and don't need it, then accommodate for what you need. Next thing I have is a uh, flat bladed shovel. And this is for snow or mud, more than anything, snow. Next thing is definitely a snow scraper and a tool for getting stuff off of your windshield. And I like this one because it extends out pretty far. Uh, if you've got a full size truck or a big old SUV, you definitely want one of these. Okay, next thing I have for getting unstuck, should need be, is I do have a hand operated come along. It would be nice to have an actual winch on the front of the truck or something like that. Just haven't got around to it yet. And these have usually, one of these has gotten me out of pretty much every scrape I've needed to thus far. These are not max tracks. I will have a link for these down below in the description. But these are um, a knockoff brand of max tracks. And you see a lot of reviews on stuff like this to say, oh, I got tore up, oh, this, all that. And then you realize of the people using these, you say, oh, it got tore up. Don't typically know how the heck to use the tools that they have. This is meant to get you unstuck. This is not meant for you to sit there and run your tires on it until your tires go bald and you rub all the nubbies off. That's not the point of what these things are for. So um, just got a set of these and uh, this is the smaller set that they make and the reason is so that way these will fit in the toolbox. All right, let's go on to some additional gear that I have here. Just let me get some of this stuff put away. All right, next thing, let's keep up with uh, some additional tools that I have. Uh, next thing I have here in this uh, ammo tin is just some good old fashioned ratchet straps along with a spare pin. In addition to whenever it comes to towing and recovery and stuff like that, I have a three-way hitch here, which has definitely seen some love. <laughs> then in this bag here, there's a front pocket that I have a lot of paracord in. And then next I've got a really good set of heavy duty jumper cables just because I don't want them to melt. Next thing I have is um, a hook for the back here that I can run my recovery strap through. And these are one of those things of when they start to look dirty and nasty, you might want to replace them. So this gets replaced. That's my second one. But anyhow, um, and then I've got this for the back for hooking to it. So that way I can get a hold of cars or someone can pull me out until I get stuck. And then additionally, I have some additional little hooks and stuff for like the paracord and the climbing carabiner on this side. Okay, and then the next item that I have, uh, this is actually a dog prepared kit. Um, in this, I have some treats for the dogs, package of food for each in case I get stuck in there with me, a water bottle, I mean uh, a water pouch, and then I've got six bottles of water specifically for the dogs. Now here's a good time to talk about on the little wings of my toolbox. There's some space in there. So on this side, I have a good pair of leather work gloves and I also have an extra dog leash. In, in addition to, I also have a spare boot knife in there. And then over on this side, I have a really heavy duty dry bag. So that way, if I need to put stuff in the bed because I don't have room, and a lot of this is because I had to clear out some room for the back seat here. And um, so if there's stuff that I need to put in the back of the bed, but I don't want it getting wet, I can throw it in the dry bag and then strap it to the back and back in here in the bed. Let's talk about my last few items that I keep in the toolbox. This is an air compressor. I did a video on this before. I'll have a link below to that in the description. But in addition to in here, I've got a few other odds and ends uh, like an extension for the hose. I've got a extra tire pressure gauge so that way I can keep an eye on there. And that's what this is. In addition to, I went ahead and got a full uh, tire patch repair kit with a few more odds and ends, some extra, some of the extra plugs that go in there along with the glue and stuff. I went ahead and got just a full on kit so that way I had everything that I would happen to possibly need. Next thing I have is these are again, these aren't necessarily waterproof. They're kind of like tarp material. But I got these for the same reason as I have the dry bag over there. These are There are three of these. So that way, if I need to go grocery shopping and I don't have room in the back seat, then I can put the groceries in these. And these are really big. 
I can put the groceries into these and then just run one ratchet strap through the handles in the back just to keep all of those in place. Additional dry storage for the bed of the truck should I need it. And then last but not least, this big bag here. This is additional clothing. Uh, in here, I have a spare pair of uh, boots, cowboy boots, because that's what I wear. Um, in addition to uh, two extra sets of socks, two uh, extra pairs of underwear, two extra undershirts, I have a full outfit of a pair of pants and a uh, sweater. And in addition to I be working in healthcare, I also have an extra set of scrubs in this bag as well. And this is in a, again, not waterproof, but water repellent. And this stays in the truck as well. So that way I've got spare clothing. All right, folks, so that's it for me. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if there's anything that you think you should carry in addition to, go ahead and put that down below in the comments. If there's something that you think I forgot, go ahead and leave that in the comments as well. And finally, again, don't forget if I get three comments asking why don't you carry a bug out bag, I will go ahead and do an entire video on that. Thanks so much for watching, folks, and as always, it's Chris Mack.